What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel, another video. Today I tried to figure out somebody else's recipe for a pour because it was something really interesting, but it was something that they were kind of keeping really close to their chest. They didn't want to disclose it. So this is kind of my rendition of that recipe. Um, for those of you that might have seen the video, Denny Joe made some ghost-like pours and I just stumbled across them a few days ago and I've been trying to like figure out the recipe. So it's been through a couple iterations. The first set that I tried, the paint cracked really bad. Um, so I kind of updated the recipe a little bit and you know, the cracking wasn't as bad, but it was still apparent. And then iteration after iteration, it eventually started getting better and better. So that's why we're here to share that recipe with you. So the paints I was using was satin enamels, pure white and Artist Low Loft Flow Acrylic White and Flow Acrylic Black. The ratios for the white, which was the most difficult part for me to kind of wrap my head around, was one part satin enamels white to one part flow troll to one part Artist Loft Flow Acrylic White to one part GAC 800. The black was much more simple. One part paint to one part flow troll. And with that, we're gonna start layering our paints. It's kind of gonna be a monochromatic pour, but I am going to add a little bit of color to it. We have this really beautiful color shift color that we're gonna be adding to it. And it is just a color shift from DecoArt straight straight out of the bottle. There's no mixing involved. I haven't actually tested this part of the process when I add this to it, but I feel like the consistency of the paint will be good for what I'm trying to achieve. So we got a decent little base coat. I do have some extra black. I'm just gonna pour little dots in the corner because the centrifugal force from when I spin it is gonna help the paint get to the corners, which is more often than not the most difficult part. So we're just putting enough black down to get a decent amount of coverage. And then in this little white bottle, this is that white concoction of the satin enamels, the Floetrol, the Artist Law Flow Acrylic White, and GAC 800. It makes some pretty cool wispy patterns and the, the, the edges of the color tend to start to fade as they continue out. So we're just gonna make a cool little design. I really love these bottles too, because I can be very precise with where I put them. We're just gonna lay it. I am going to also wreck this, so right now I just, I want a decent amount of dispersion between the white and the black. But I, I, I do intend on wrecking it, so that's good for now. Might add more, but we'll see. So like I was saying, it's just the color shift paint straight out of the bottle. Touch it there, kind of let it drag off the stick. Because it is semi thick still. But I think for what we're trying to do, I think it'll work just fine. Just lay it down, kind of just let a little bead of it kind of get dragged through. Don't want to contaminate the paint with a bunch more color, you know? All right. You can already see the edges are starting to kind of wisp out a little bit, which I think is super awesome. Here. All right. 
I also had a gold that I had mixed up. It was doing some really funky interactions with the black paint, so I don't know if I'm gonna use that. And a little bit of mica silver, that's just one part mica powder, one part uh, Liquitex pouring medium. It's given it enough of a thick consistency to kind of just lay it over the top. So how's everybody doing this wonderful day? I hope you guys are doing amazing. Have some pretty cool news. I bought a home in Arizona. And that is where I will be living here in a few months if everything goes according to plan. Very excited about it because that is where I'm going to kind of set up shop. So I plan on renting out a building where I can host classes and like kind of a sip and pour type events. I think those are going to be amazing. And I can't wait to get there and get this whole process started. All right, so I'm going to take this little tool I got from Michaels, kind of wreck it a little bit. I want these colors to kind of play with each other. Put a cool little swirl in it. It's dragging that silver all around. There we go. I do intend on having some negative space in this. So I think that that right there is pretty good. You're starting to really see the, the edges are kind of just tapering off, fading off into almost nothing. It just gives it a really elegant look, really wispy and ghost-like and just beautiful all around. I know that I'm gonna wanna do a few more of these because, wow, that is so nice. Just simple colors. We do have some really light bands of that color shift going through and you can't see it as well. The silver is it's a special kind of mica powder that the color will kind of rise to the surface and then we're just getting little specks of sparkle interspersed where those lines were. <laughs> this looks so cool. Oh man, that came out a lot better than I had thought in my head. It's like I was telling you, it's taken me a couple days to kind of figure this out and I know that I'm not exactly spot on the recipe right now but i'm going to continue to iterate and uh share it with you guys because i i want everybody to be able to do these if if this is something you enjoy and you like these kind of things i want you to all be able to do it but let me bring the camera down i want you guys to get a look at it when it's wet and then we will check out the dry version after that and you can see that color shift is really defined when the light hits it I really enjoy the way these lines are really wispy. They almost kind of just fade off. And that is the effect that I was hoping to get. And I'm so glad that I'm getting closer. If you want to watch another video just like this, click the screen right now and I'll see you there.